ghosts, ghoulies, and sightlings. Welcome to a very special Halloween episode of Unsightly Opinions. I think I've gone slightly mad, but that's to be expected this time of year. I take Halloween very seriously. So what did I decide to do? I decided to do a last minute Halloween costume even though I have absolutely nowhere to wear it, so I'm just gonna put it out there on the internet instead. This is a challenge video, so if you're a seamstress that likes extreme challenges, give yourself only 12 hours to sew an extreme costume. That's what I'm going to do. I also gave my boyfriend free reign to get all of the materials necessary. I put together a list of what I wanted, but we'll see what he comes back with. Today, I will be turning into Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Let's see how it goes. Welcome to my prison for the next 12 hours. Robbie did really, really well. He got almost everything I needed. The only thing that he couldn't find was hotfix rhinestones, so we're gonna be working with the dollar store equivalent, which is fine, but it's gonna mean a little more hot glue on my fingers later. So I have a vinyl for the bodice, and I'm gonna make a corset style bodice, and I'm going to do a brushed or matte satin skirt. It's a very heavyweight satin, and I'm gonna do the tentacles for Ursula out of flounce. So I have some chiffon here, and I'm gonna try and elevate it a little bit by surging the outside edge of the flounce in purple. Let's clear all this up. I'm gonna switch my serger thread out for purple, and then we'll be on our way. We are all set up. I have my chiffon laid out because that's what we're gonna do first is the flounce because I'm gonna paint it with some glitter glue and it's gonna need some time to dry. So what I have in front of me is what I usually use as the centerpiece for my table. It's just the largest circular thing I can find and we're gonna cut out spirals of chiffon. Hopefully we can cut all eight tentacles out here at the same time, because that'll save some time. Oh, did you start the stopwatch? Using my blind-friendly cutting method, I used one hand to cut and the other to guide the scissors around my circular platter, cutting all eight layers of chiffon. I'm having a rough time cutting today. So we have eight rough circles here. I wish there was a way I could kind of mark this in a swirl better. Nope, we're just gonna go for it. I picked a spot on the outside of the circle and started cutting the chiffon freehanding a swirl shape using my hand as a width guide. Oh yes indeed. This is gonna work. Now serger, I know I ask a lot of you. Please be nice. Using purple thread, I searched all the raw edges of my swirly cut chiffon. One tentacle. Now to do it seven more times. 30 minutes later. I'm sparkly. In my opinion, there is no such thing as too much sparkle. I think it's really important, especially when you're working in monochromes and when you're dealing with a character that is in two dimensions, that is animated, you need to add detail. You need to add depth and you need to add certain color pops just so that the eye, not that mine work, is gonna catch all of the details and see all of that lovely, lovely effort that you've put into your costume. So I'm gonna put these aside and then I'm going to actually start the skirt construction. All right, I have my fabric laid out for the skirt here. We're using a very heavyweight brushed satin. I have all of my measurements here, which you can't read because they're in braille, but it's the easiest way for me to kind of map pattern pieces and keep track of all of the numbers. If you're curious about how I sew when I can't see, I have another video where I make a Victorian apron blindfolded where I break down step by step how I sew. So you can check that out. It'll be linked in a card above and in the description box down below. But let's jump into making the skirt. I started by measuring and cutting five inches off the top of my fabric for the waistband of the skirt. Then I mapped the top half of my mermaid skirt by making two large rectangles and pins. Then I marked the six triangular pieces for the bottom of the mermaid flare with pins and cut everything out. When that was done, I started sewing together the bottom panels of the mermaid skirt. It's a cape. When I finished dancing around with my skirt as a cape, I finished sewing together the bottom panels of the skirt. Now I'm gonna do a rough hem on it. So this is basically where everything could go very wrong very quickly. So I'm definitely not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna go for it. Oh. 
Using my hand and arm as a guide, I tried to create the rough shape of the bottom of the skirt. Then I started the top half of the skirt sewing together the back panels and inserting a zipper. All right, so we got this skirt pinned together. This is not how I'd suggest doing any kind of a tight fitting pencil skirt. I'm just hoping I got enough room for my badonka donk and move forward. I sewed the front and back of the pencil skirt together following the pins I had as seam markers. I have a pre-cut pattern that I drafted many, many years ago. This is for a underbust corset. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out with some pretty generous margins on top and bottom. I used one hand to help me follow the pattern and the other to cut, leaving about an inch border on all sides of the pattern. I started happily sewing the bodice together until I was informed there was another piece I had cut and missed sitting further up the table, and I realized I had sewed my entire corset wrong. Then I tried to soldier through, but I messed up again and reached that point in sewing where you want to bang your head against a wall. It's definitely the same day. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing the same clothes and I did my makeup the exact same way. Being truthful, I needed to take a break last night. Sitting under these bright lights was a little bit too much for me. It gave me a really bad migraine. I have no idea what yesterday's footage looks like, but if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I'm trying to look away from the lights because they are really intense. I wish you could see how many lights we have going on here. It's a lot. I made a few errors before I took a break last night. So still under the timer, I picked all of that out so we can start fresh today. I hope you don't think less of me for taking a break. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna finish attaching these bodice pieces together and then we'll be back on track. I stitched the entire bodice together on a 5 8 seam using my tactile marker on my sewing machine as a guide. I have my boning channels in. I slipped these topless zip ties into the channels just so I had homemade boning because I didn't pick some up at the store. And now we're gonna shape the bodice top and bottom and leave some room for adding in the bra piece. Ow, ooh, ooh, ooh. owie, am I bleeding? Yeah. Good. Okay. Now that I have this all cut out, I shaped the bottom and gave it a little bit of a point. Now normally I do a rolled hem, I'd make it really pretty. We're not doing that today. We're just gonna fold it over and stitch it. I folded over about an inch at the bottom of the bodice and sewed it in place. My sewing machine kind of messed up some of the stitching a little bit. It isn't perfect. But unless somebody was getting in here with a magnifying glass, I don't think anybody would notice. So I'm gonna call that good enough. We have the bottom of our bodice done. I'm gonna stand up so you can see it. So it's gonna sit just around our hips. It's got a nice point. And now we need to shape the top so we can add the boob cups. I'm now gonna cut two large ovals, which we'll adjust in a moment. Okay, so these are massive, but I wanted to give myself a little room for seam allowance and to play with the shape a little bit. My tool came folded exactly the length I needed, so I just followed the fold and cut all of the pieces apart. Then I ran gathering stitches through each piece of tool individually, and I gathered, gathered, and gathered some more to give myself a crinoline. I have gathered an awful lot of tool. So we're gonna take this, pin it to itself, and get all of the layers sewn together so we have a proper crinoline. Then I'm gonna actually put it under the skirt and see if there's anywhere else that needs volume. And I have one extra piece here that I can use either to fluff the back or to fluff the side or the front or wherever it needs it. Skirt pinned to crinoline, pinned to tentacles. I'm gonna try it on once and then we're gonna stitch it all together. By this point, I was trying to stitch together quite a number of layers of fabric. Between the tentacles, the bottom of the mermaid skirt, and the crinoline, it felt like I was trying to push a whale underneath my presser foot. That being said, I managed to force it through my machine, and we had the bottom of our skirt assembled. After that, I attached the top of the skirt to the bottom of the skirt and the waistband to the skirt. Unfortunately, my phone decided it had had enough, so it stopped recording before any of this happened. We are almost finished with construction. I am back onto the bodice after a little break. I had to do some off-camera work because I wasn't gonna show the internet my tatas. I had to measure these boob cups 
to be exactly the right size for the undergarments that I'll be wearing under this bodice. These are not forgiving. Working with vinyl sucks when you're trying to make boob cups, so we may end up with a little bit of a Madonna cone boob. I had Robbie help me out by putting some indents where my boob cups should fit into this bodice. So we're gonna stitch these up first and then attach them, then finish stitching the top of the bodice. I stitched my very pointy boob cups together by putting a dart at the bottom of each cup. Then I went back and folded over the top of the bodice to finish the rough edge and attach the cups. It was about this time that I was very unhappy with how everything was going. Nothing was beautifully tailored. I remembered why I never work with vinyl, but I had to soldier on because I was eight hours deep into this project and there was no turning back. We have a bodice and it's together, mostly. Um, I do need to finish the top edges of the boob cups, but I'll do that when I'm decorating and when I have that bra back on so I know where the edges are that I want to make sure are covered. The last step for this bodice is to insert rivets. It's going to be fun. We need a hammer. So, yeah, I hit my thumb three more times and couldn't make it through the material, so I admitted defeat and Robbie took over and hammered in the eyelets for me. Funny story, I had no idea how to put in zippers when I started sewing, so for the first four or five years, everything had a lace-up back. Apparently, I'm out of practice with a hammer. You can probably see it's a bit of a mess. Uh, we have beads everywhere. Beads, rhinestones, little bits of jewelry. And now we come to my favorite part of any construction. It's the decoration. So I'm not actually going to do this on camera because it's just gonna be four hours of me rhinestoning and that is gonna be boring as heck. I'm gonna put some strategic rhinestoning around certain areas like the bottom of the bodice, around the bottom of the boob cups, all over the skirt, especially around the seam at the bottom where the mermaid starts, maybe a few on the tentacles. And we'll just see where we get to with the time we have. Normally, I would take a lot of time and individually hand bead on every one of these so it lasts forever. We don't have the luxury of time today. We just gotta get it done. Just in case you're wondering, I do get help when I choose the colors that go well with any of my beads. They are all labeled in braille. So if I am by myself, I can generally pick something that'll usually work. But if I'm being really serious about a costume, I always have somebody double check what I'm doing to make sure things match, to make sure it goes well, because I can't check for myself. So I'll see you in about four hours. So we're coming down to our final 30 seconds. No, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done. I'm not done. All the sparkles came off and now I'm worried that I'm ruining it because I don't have the right color sparkles here and I'm worried I'm going to break my dress. I need more time. I need different sparkles. 15 seconds. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, I feel like I'm really Three, ruining this. Three, two, one, zero. No! Okay. For a really ambitious, fully detailed build, I think this went about as well as could be expected. Some things turned out really awesome, others not so much, but you'll need to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Did I make a convincing Ursula? Would you recognize me as the character? Did you like the design I came up with? The whole last minute build was really positive because it forced me to push forward even when I wasn't 100% sure on how something was going to turn out and try something. Anything. But there's a lot of things I would change. If you can find iridescent chiffon, it works much better than painting it with glitter glue as most of my glitter came off when I was sewing it together and I lost a lot of the pop I was hoping for. Putting beads on with hot glue is a really painful process and they were constantly popping off while we were trying to film. So if you need it for one night, it'll be fine. But if you want repeated wear, I strongly advise against hot gluing any embellishment. Also, vinyl sucks and is hard to work with. Oh, and on a side note, painting yourself purple is really gross and sticky with oil-based makeup. Get proper body paint. It's worth every penny. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time doing it. I hate myself a little bit at the same time because this was brutal. Is this my best work? Oh my gosh, no. Did I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Did I reach that point about three quarters of the way through where I hated myself a little bit? Also yes. But would I do it again? Probably. So if you're a seamstress and you want to do a challenge like this, please do it 
film it, send me a link. I would love to watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit those bells and buttons. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to keep up with me in between uploads, I have an accessible Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday night, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time, linked on screen and in the description box down below. I also have my Instagram and other social media accounts where you can keep up with me day to day. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Happy Halloween! Thank you.